Hello everybody and welcome back to the Storm Poker Challenge for MyBet.com. My name is Dylan and in this fifth video, as promised, we'll be playing four simultaneous Storm cash game tables. And skipping all the theory, basically, if you guys haven't seen the first four videos, definitely do so. We'll be building upon everything that we've covered until this point. And in this session, we'll just be going for it in live action. As you see here, dropping in and enjoying the rides in a multi-table cash game session at the Storm Poker Tables. But right before we jump into these tables, I do want to show you guys how December has run so far. As you see here, we've got yeah, approximately 1,600 hands, and that was only guys in two sessions, relatively brief sessions at the Storm Tables. And as you'll see here, um, with the four, tor four table session, uh, you see so many hands per hour, it's just off the chain. Uh, we won basically four and a half stacks uh, with an adjusted EV of, yeah, 63 at more or less three stacks, right? We're playing the NL20 tables, as you guys well know, running at 26, 27 big blinds per hundred um, for the times when we're pushing uh, pre-river. In heads up pots, we're running at about 19, 19.4 big blinds per hundred. Uh, the rest of that, as you guys see, um, I've covered yeah in previous videos. The uh, VP PFR split of about 2015, and yeah, everything's going well. One thing that I would like to point your attention to is that our sets have been quite high. Um, on average, that's going to be around 11 percent. So whenever you are running so well um, with your sets. Be a bit more cautious um, with calling for set value, especially in heads-up pots. You know, start calling for set value in, in more multi-way pots because this will, approaching infinity, always even out to about eleven percent. And I've run an analysis of the initial yeah, ten thousand hands or so that we played um, here at the storm tables, and my aggression was a bit too high, as is often the case. Uh, it's actually been dropped down to the four point five. And in six max, I mean, it's going to be a bit higher, but that's still probably a bit too high. Um, and we'll be looking to especially reduce the aggression when we're in the blinds. Um, as of now, we've posted a profit in every single position outside of the blinds. So, yeah, our only loss as of now is yeah in the blind positions, and that's where we'll try to reduce this number for sure. And yeah, these are the December December numbers so far for about again I think sixteen hundred hands. Our steals are. We're running at 55% success, that's good in general. And the rest of that you guys know, again, from the previous videos. Yeah, biggest hands, um, just sorted by, by cash. And when you're, when you're playing at the same limit, if you, if you do about big blinds or um, cash, doesn't make any difference. And in preparation for this session, I've played just 200 plus hands and yeah, we've been running real well so far. Uh, showdown winnings at 34 bucks, uh, non-showdown plus minus zero, and we're up for the session so far, uh, right at $31 or in big blinds, right at yeah, a stack and a half-ish. With that guys, no further ado, we'll jump right into it. And again, yeah, don't click the check fold as I was telling you before. <laughs> The thing is, when you're when you're playing four and six tables, and you know you're gonna fold this nonsense anyways. Yeah, okay, make an exception to the rule. Don't worry about it. Just yeah, go ahead and click that. <laughs> uh, if you're not playing one or two tables where you can be completely conscious of everything going on, um, yeah, that's that's a button to avoid. We flopped the trips here again, 73 to one against more or less. But we want to see about it because it is too suited. And Jack King can be out there, and Jack Knife, you know, stuff like that. Uh, here we're gonna flat for set value, even though we are high on our set percentage so far. Raise is always nice, he's not on a flop set of tens here, full of queens. Uh, another ace queen suited, same hand. Um, fast decision. Let's flat one, change it up a bit instead of three betting. And after those checks, I'll take a shot here on the turn, nothing really changed. Uh, inside straight draw, nut straight draw, and. Yeah, pair of aces down low. Never a bad thing. He bets the 180 and not on a not on a straight draw, guys. If it were too suited, I would have taken a taken a shot at that to peel one off on the turn. But it wasn't, so we had you know bear inside straight draw. You're looking at 11 to 1 odds at completing. Just um, yeah, don't worry about that. Wait for a better spot. 
And again, guys, you know, we've got it capped off, as you guys well know from the initial videos, um, to 100 big blinds. Anytime we drop underneath that, here I will re-steal from the button. Not officially a re-steal, but a late position raiser, and then I raise it up with my nines on the button. Fold back to the EP raiser. Uh, here we're just going to flat one with the king 10 and suited. Uh, multiway pot, flop top pair, decent kicker. I got to bet that out. And, uh, Min raise pot. We're probably going to look at yeah over pairs at one point, but this is this is one you want to build a pot with a bit. If you catch another ten or a king, uh, you're looking really really good. And here we'll play hopefully for pot control. Uh, if he takes another shot, we know we're pretty much toast. And he does for 240. So yeah, check out. All right, rock and roll and raising it up. Ace queen offsuit under the gun. And again, guys, if this is too much for you, and this is the first video you've seen from the Storm Poker Challenge, um, <laughs> don't worry, it's going to be too much for most people. Um, just definitely see those first videos uh, as we were building up to this. Uh, we get three bet here, and I'm going to, I'm just going to flat that again. Backdoor, weak backdoor flush draw. Could have raised that as well. I'm just going to check, see what he does. Um, we're in trouble here with the king on board. 640 mid stack pushed, imagine that. King 9 suited again. We flop the second nut flush draw. Dunk it out as a semi bluff. You know, we got to see that flop real cheap. Uh, he could be on other cards. He does raise it up for 75 on 225, and it's like 3 to 1, but I need 4 to 1. But with the implied odds, I think we're good. Uh, let's see if he doesn't check behind. <laughs> with his stack size, he should push. Yeah, yeah he doesn't. Alright, now it's 2-1 to one and I got nothing to pick up behind here, so I gotta let that go. Bummer. Didn't work out. But, versus a big stack player, you probably could have found a, another call there. Uh, you had basically a two pair draw, plus a flush draw. And yeah, that's pretty tricky if another... Uh, if you two pair on that board and he's not upset, um, he's only got the overpair, for example. Off we go, guys. So again, you're gonna see this cat back up here, down low to 20 bucks. Whenever I drop below that, uh, everything else will be as as is as we move forward. Um, and uh, as always, guys, I mean, you guys, you can check out. You know, once you get up, maybe half a stack or full stack stuff like that. A lot of guys do. However, as mentioned in the previous videos, with those bigger stacks, you you know you have more you have more respect in general, um, more fold equity quite often because the guys are gonna be yeah worried about you being able to completely uh, take them to the bank here for for deep stacks. So yeah, your choice. I mean, you can also you know get off of this table and cash back in for twenty and run it like that, or you can yeah just let your profits run. And yeah, played as we will with the additional big stacks. The, the only thing that we didn't really mention in the earlier videos is that when you are playing deep stacked, um, that means let's say 150 big blinds or more. So in our case, 30 bucks or more. Um, then you want to um, okay flat this here for set value again. <laughs> Nope. And yeah, we're seeing how our 17% is slowly dropping back down to 11, probably. <laughs> On the sense here, and uh, yet again, we'll just, uh, you could raise it up, flat it. I uh, just chose to let it go. Uh, he bets it out, and we let that also go. And not a lot of not a lot of action here in the second part of our series. We have gotten some really decent hands, but not a lot of play with them. We want to see a couple raises and re-raises here. And now with you know all the hands that we played at this um, level, we do have some history with a lot of these guys, and they know that we're playing a little bit wider, wider, a little bit wackier. Um, that we're raising like this here as a re-steal with complete nonsense from time to time. Um, and for that reason, you know we, we will get more play um, from time to time, depending on whom who we got across the felt. All right, let's go ahead and raise that back on up. <laughs> He, he seemed to like his hands. I mean, he he goes for it. Excellent. See, nice. All right, we get that in like at I think ninety percent plus ahead of him. 
and actually it holds this time, that's always nice. Um, so yeah, this table's going real well, and okay, we got another bonus, guys, um, from our initial deposit. Another bonus payout for the hand we played here at my bet. that up here versus a EP limper. <laughs> so here you go guys. Raise or limp min raise is what this guy just did, right? That's a monster at low stakes and you just let that go. Limp min raise from under the gun <laughs> with or without stats, duck out if you don't hold queens are better. Maybe ace king. <laughs> or or of course flat for set value, right? Because you know you're gonna have crazy implied odds when you do hit your set. Probably his whole stack because he's holding more than likely queens are better. JJ Dynamite over pair. I'm gonna bet that out. Uh, I'm gonna half pot it here and hope he's on queens or kings here. Excellent. And now we want to make a big value bet. Ah, no payment. No payment on the river. Bummer. Again, guys, yeah, your suited connectors. You want to be playing, you know, the backfield. You want to be playing a late position. Uh, and with initiative as well as you can, it means raising it up yourself, you know, first in, um, or over, over calling, over limping from time to time in multiple way pots, but again, as late as you can be, especially in the six max environment, um, necessarily in a flooring environment. Seven more players. JJ Dynamite, yet again, raise that up. Uh, Ace, at the ace jack versus the re-steal here, um, we're out. We're dominated way too often in that spot. Another Mr. Jackson. 54, out the door. 72, 97, gone, gone, gone. 10 4. Alright, so against him, right, we had guys, as you guys saw with the mid stackers, it was 10s or better ace queen that were flatting, and we get it in good. Right, when they shove against us, he flops the miracle set. We were 80% ahead of the guy pre flop. That's variance, that's gonna happen. Perfect call. And it was within the range, you know, that I explained to you guys for these mid stack shoves. So, yeah, in this case, we did get it in as an 80% plus favorite, and yeah, hard luck. No biggie play on. That's how it's gonna happen. You know you're gonna win some when you're ahead, you're gonna lose some um, when you're ahead. It's it's all part of the game. Just don't tilt. Um, don't yeah, don't leave your don't leave leave your strategy. Have them adjust to your game, not the other way around. Then you'll be just fine. If you notice again, as I mentioned in the, I think the third video, that you're starting to have a little emotional push one way or the other. Then we squeeze here by the way with aces. Um, he shoves while we get it in yet again with aces, that's brilliant. It's gotta be the music. It's gotta be the music. <laughs> wow, we get in again as another 92% favorite. All over. 74. Semi bluff that out here with a flush draw, weak flush draw. 57 suited on the button. And we will definitely steal with that. So we miss. Let's see if we can't get two cards for the price of one with our semi bluff on the flop. It's a good spot for him to bet now with any ace. He needs to bet that, right? Because uh, that's, a, that's a float, so he's floating us. And again, you can do that with the ace or without, you know, as a made hand or as a bluff. Uh, 80 on the 180, yeah, I doubt we're going to get paid when the club comes, so I just let that go. You could have found, found the call there if you think that you're going to get paid off. But you need 4 point, you know, 4.1 to 1 odds, let's call it 4 to 1 odds, whatever. Um, on that flush draw coming into the river, and it's a weak flush draw, right? So, yeah, there's a bit of reverse implied odds and entailed with that. And uh, here again, we're gonna limp call with our pair of threes uh, for set value. Uh, I'm gonna flat this min race here with the 10 jack suited from the uh, big blind. Uh, looking for the eight there, but again, it's a paired board, so the eight may not even be good enough. Let's we'll see what he does. Again, min raises in early position, guys. Low stakes. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't flop big, just let that go. It's ten good. Wow, we actually pick up a card here, and this time we're gonna take a shot after a check here. This guy also checked behind. Fifty-seven again, same hand as below. Showing weakness, we take a shot on the turn. You know, when the king queen is on board, 
And we take that down. Very beautiful. Uh, Kingsies. And here I'm going to do a what? Yes, squeeze. Open razor, flat collar, and you three bet it as a squeeze. You're squeezing the initial razor. And I'm doing this here from the blinds. This isn't a steel raise because he's doing it from mid position. But whenever you do squeeze, you want to pretty much see bed most flops, at least with the king, queen, ace on board. And cross your fingers that he didn't have it. <laughs> and you take it down. Alright. Yeah, so far so good, guys. Um, up on all tables. 68. Big check fold on that board. King, queen will probably raise up open, may flat, not versus a small stack player. 68, okay, again, uh, yeah, against two players. Against one player, I would definitely bet that, but not against two. Okay, music just went south. Change that up. Rolling back out. Nines, we isolate this limper. Fours, we flat for set value. In position, hopefully by the button. We don't want to see a squeeze from this guy. Good, we get an over flat that adds to our pot when we do hit our four. Oh, nice. Okay, but that's a seriously, seriously dangerous board. So, I like to take this down right now. Um, I want to see him shove over the top that we can call it with hopefully versus, you know, one diamond. And he only flats, that's a bad thing. Uh, small stacker, I'm not going to get into it with nines. Uh, we'll call that with Queen King. Looking for the Jackson. Uh, and here, of course, I show versus his remaining stack. Uh, here we'll check one, see if we can't peel it off. Um, 85. <laughs> oh, sick. And we, get, we take it down here with our nice little uh, fours full of fives. He thought he was good with the trips. That was pretty dangerous play, you know, on the three-suited board, but what to do. Uh, I'm not going to call the inside straight draw, guys. Uh, although I may have had the overcard draw to boot, you know. Um, We'll just we'll definitely have a better spot. This pool, right now, what we're playing with, um, what we're getting called down with, this is the value bet, because I don't think he has a queen. Um, let's see here. If he comes over the top, we know where we are. <laughs> he does that good. Um, yeah, this pool is apparently quite loose, at least from the showdowns that we've seen so far. And not only loose, but uh, calling down loose, right, with uh, really weak hands. So that's very, very good for your bottom line. So, yeah, there's no need to play every single hand by any means. Um, looks like we're going to get paid quite a bit when we got it, which is always nice. Uh, 46, yeah. Okay. <laughs> At pot it, he lets it go, we take it down. After all that weakness, why not? Uh, one last... oh nah. Okay, I'm just gonna check with a weak ace here behind. He can't call us down with a worse hand, and yeah, ace is good. Off we are. The yeah, action, another pair of kings, cowboys, up top. And it is raised, beauty. We three bet on the button. As we'll be doing, as you guys have seen, with a lot of weaker hands. Uh, here. Steel raise here, he lets that go, bummer. Fold or ace eight versus the gun to the gun razor. Ace ten, open raise from middle position. If I say EP guys again, that's early position, MP mid, um, late. This is of course late. Sixty four, inside straight draw. <laughs> All right. Wow. Hero jacks yet again. Ace queen. 99 feeling fine here in the big flop or over pair, which is nice. You're gonna see over cards, guys, with a pair of jacks on about well over 50% of all flops. Um, so we're not stoked that he called that. We're just gonna peel one off. Hopefully, <laughs> we want to see a low card, you know, non queen, king, or ace. Yeah, this is a tough spot, really tough spot. He is big stacked. Um, I'm gonna play this as a bluff and deuce line. Nice. Okay, so now, okay, I gotta bet that out because he may check behind. Um, but I think he might have been on the flush draw here or the bear ten, and we may have sucked out. Um, he may be way behind us. No idea. But now we're jacks full of ten, so if he does have the flush, he's gonna probably bet again. And no dice, no dice. C bet here in position after the check. Uh, wow, catch another turn set. That is just disgustingly awesome. 
Oh, but guys, it's not going to happen all the time. That's rare, right? It's really rare. We got two outs there. And, of course, he had the uh, straight bits of armor. But, um, yeah, it was pretty sweet, that turn. <laughs> uh, and then we got hosed. <laughs> it was actually the, the turn button that, uh, or the turn card that actually got us involved in that pot here for a uh, yeah, bigger, bigger portion of our stack. So some of those, some of those ones that you really hit hard on on the turn of the river are the ones that cost you, cost you your ass, um, because you're walking into a stronger hand. But yeah, I have to say, that's all. You know, also not often going to be the case. Um, the hand that he held. And here I bet half this guy's pot just under, just under that pot. Damn it, didn't want to see that club. But the good thing is, you know, it's of course giving us a full house. And it may be one of those things where he's on the back door flush draw and then bets it out, and we get it all in here with kings full of jacks. And I might limp here, I might complete here in the small if it's limped around to us. And here we get two cards for the price of one on our flop bet. We'll be calling a raise off suit. 77, lucky sevens, here we go. Let's see if we can't raise that up and then flop our set. He bets into us, we got Jack <laughs> and Nada. We are catching new hand, guys, and you know the storm tables. It's a good thing you you got no worries about getting bored, <laughs> especially when you're running yeah four four plus tables. It is action city, and you don't have to play marginal hands. You know you can even sit here and play a completely rock range. You know, tens a better ace queen from any position. I mean, some guys actually do that, and yeah, just go to town with it, and you know set up six tables here instead of the four, which I may actually do in the next session. Um, and yeah, just go for broke there, playing a really, really tight range. Alrighty. Yeah, let's check behind. If there's no good, there's no spade there. And if he checks again and we bet it, we're gonna have more full equity on the turn. That's into its full pot, we'll let that go. Here we'll flat one, jack 10 suited on the button. So we got position, post flop, and a really good speculative hand. Alright, so we got flopper open in a straight draw on a rainbow board. It's a perfect, perfect flop. And we're gonna flat that. And didn't like that queen. Got unlucky. He checks and we get two cards for the price of one. Brilliant. And then we actually catch, you know. Now we got we don't have the nuts, guys, because it's a pair of board. Be careful there, right? If he's on a pair of eights, he's now eights full of queens, but I think we're good here, so I'm gonna raise. Um you know, with our with our Broadway straight. We got the King Queen. Yeah, so again guys, um, you can also flat that if you if you think that is the case. You know, pair eights, king queen, stuff like that. Um, ace queen could have also been on the list. Um, yeah, and we could have also just you know not gotten greedy there and and flatted behind with our beatable straight. Um, in retrospect, of course, that's a better play, but at the same time, I think you're going to get called down with a lot of weaker hands when you do have that straight. So yeah, that's how that's how that went down, you know. Got a little unlucky, but what to say? 77 is now a fold. He checks that. We bet it out as a pure bluff here on the turn. In position yet again. And take it down. Alright. All right, we got a limper here. Fellow deep stack player. Alright, so you gotta be careful here, guys. Um, he limps. And he's a deep stack player, so a limp call is very often going to be a small pair, right? We bet that out. Semi bluff over cards and the flush draw, not flush draw. At this point, he does flat. We miss. Now the board's paired, guys. And again, paired board. Even when I hit my flush, is scary as hell versus a deep stack player. So I'm not going to overplay that at all. I'm going to make one final half pot value bet and hope he doesn't come over the top. Because I'm not, I'm not excited about my top pair here. Not at all. Um, again, you know, we take that down, but we play that for pot control versus a deep stack player. Don't get excited about that, guys. Um, it's also when that flush hits, when that spade hits, right there, paired board, that guy limp called as a fellow deep stack player. Get ready for a real shocker, right? I eat a full house coming at you. Um, when it gets active, right? Um, so, you know, you got a good hand, but you got a beatable hand, and versus a deep stack player, it's a different game, you know. Uh, paired board, guys. The nut flush is not the nut flush. It is only a flush, and it's a beautiful flush versus all full houses and four of a kind. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, 
when you do happen to, you know, double up your stacks here at the storm tables. Uh, it's a min raise here, which is flat for cheap. Swing and miss, no big deal. Alright, jackknife, no good. 7Q out the door. 67 might find the flat uh, versus multiple callers, not versus an under the gun raising. So we're running really, really hot for a while. Now you can see that the, uh, the hands have cooled off a bit, and that's going to be a natural, natural process, guys. Um, don't feel the need to get active, right? Once you've had a really good run, I'm just going to flat this again. They flop it, backdoor flush draw as well. I get a blocker. And do flop top pair over here. And again, I'm going to play some pot control. Steel raise from the button. He bets two, and again here we're just pot control, pot control, pot control on our queen kicker. Hopefully he missed this flush, and we turn our hand basically into a bluff catcher. Hope he's not on the jack. <laughs> uh, one flat, one raise over the top, our king now is dead. So yeah, we check behind. And he shows the same hand. Don't think he was going to fold that anyways. Um, but yeah, play one for pot control like that. And you know, we could have maybe found a bet on the end, but the problem is, when you bet that he comes over the top, you can't know that he's not on any bear jack. Right, and he can also check raise you as a bluff um, really big when he misses his, his potential flush draw right there, and you pretty much gotta lay your hand down, right? Because that, that board had been paired, and you only had the queen kicker. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, a couple tips as we move forward. Uh, seven. Ah, we'll take a shot. Two suited. Nah, okay. So every six, every diamond. Uh, well, two diamonds is killing us, and now we're just gonna check here and hope, like heck, that he's on like any Broadway overcards that aren't too suited. <laughs> he bets we, of course, let that go. Get out. Yet again, guys. Big pots, big hands, small pots, small hands. Small hand equals only top pair, uh, and even over pairs. It's a small hand, guys. It's a good hand, but a small hand. It's not a hand that you want to go stacking off with necessarily, right, in many cases, especially versus uh, pillow deep stack players. Alright, big slick here on the button, let's see what we can do. And we will raise that up, we check, so we take a shot in position, half pot, he's only got to fold one time in three for us to break even in the long run. He checks again, we see two cards for the price of one. He does, and I definitely don't want to bet that. Um, we've got Nod, if he checks one more time, I will bet the, I will bet the river, because that's the only way we're going to take this down. And again, half pot, he's only going to fold one time in three. And there we get called with eight, shit. So he played a bluff and deuce line. It was a good line, I like that play. Um, from that player, that was, that was definitely good. And he did catch us, so again, I don't see us taking it down with a king, um, but I do see him folding potentially after those, yeah, after all those checks and we play out of position. Um, good bluff induced line, he caught us, bravo, play on. Alright, steel raise with the ace 10 versus the fellow deep stack, and again this is where you want to be able to mouse over here and see how much he's folded into, the see that stuff like that um, on the flop, but yeah, we pick up here a top pair. Yeah, we don't want to be fooling around here because it is too suited. Uh, we think we're probably still good. We just check. He may have missed. And then we will isolate the limper here. And with our tens on the button. Here's a re-steal from the big gamer. Tens, unfortunately with hard as we often will on those flops, but we can represent the king when we raise pre-flop. That's half the reason to do that, guys. You can represent a much wider range in your actual holding when you raise pre-flop. Uh, any high card board, stuff like that. So again, this is Dylan for MyBet.com here in our Storm Poker Challenge. 
wishing you all the best in general and definitely best of luck at your next storm poker table